my inability to cook, to clean, etc., etc. I like to think that I blessed my parents' lives. Naturally, that makes me think, what if they had had two of me? Hypothetically, obviously, let's say my poor mother had identical twins and she also had enough, so she gives one of us away. Despite our identical DNA, us twins will grow up to be very different, height-wise, health-wise, and so forth, with our different life experiences. A major reason for this is epigenetics, modifying gene expression without changing the DNA sequence. Now, one epigenetic process crucial for normal development is genomic imprinting, that is, the silencing of genes. The imprint basically instructs for DNA methylation, thus directly switching genes off, and post-translational histone modifications to alter DNA accessibility. But the really, really interesting thing about imprinting is that, unlike with most genes, it only actually affects one of the two homologous parental alleles. For instance, if the paternal allele is imprinted, then the maternal allele is the only functional copy of that gene. One way of testing imprinted gene function is by analyzing their associated phenotypes, which is exactly what Sheila Barton and her colleagues did in 1991 when studying the role of paternally imprinted genes on mouse development. Their first step, of course, was to mate F1 female and male mice. Then they collected the F2 fertilized eggs and blastocyst stage embryos. Next, the scientists utilize nuclear transplantation to construct what we call androgenetic, or AG, eggs. In essence, each diploid AG egg contains not one, but two sets of paternal genomes. Ideally, the double dosage of imprinted genes would produce nice dramatic phenotypic effects. Continuing on, after some culturing, the researchers isolated the inner cell mass from each egg and injected them into the blastocyst. These operated blastocysts were then transferred to the female mice. After a week, some embryos were dissected out and studied while others were left to term. Also, GPI analysis was used to estimate the percent contributions and locations of AG cells per embryo. The entire process was repeated with gynogenetic or GG cells, which had two maternal genomes for comparison's sake. Alrighty, so Barton found that the AG embryos were easily distinguishable from their non-AG siblings. When left to term, they exhibited severe growth abnormalities. The spine was severely scoliotic, the ribs enlarged, distorted, fused, and the heart was also enlarged and disorganized. GPI analysis confirmed that in these deformed areas, AG cell contribution was substantial. In contrast, it was especially low in the brain, which correspondingly displayed no phenotypic change. Fascinatingly, when AG cell contribution was extremely high, we're talking like over 50% here, some embryos actually had no overt abnormalities. But they, uh, they also died shortly after birth. The Spartan concluded that the change in shape was proportional to AG cell contribution, but levels above 50% were lethal. And remember how the team also set up GG embryos for comparison? Well, it turns out GG cells cause totally reciprocal phenotypes. That is, growth was reduced by up to 50%, with high contributions in the brain and low in skeletal muscle. Barton's data was so important because it suggested that imprinting of some parental alleles establishes a balance of gene dosage in the developing diploid embryo, and that this balance is essential for normal growth and development. Whilst the 1991 study was performed using mouse models, it can be extrapolated to humans. This is especially applicable for diseases like Prader-Willi and Angelman syndrome. These developmental disabilities occur when normal imprinting of chromosome 15 is combined with a deletion mutation. A deletion on the paternal chromosome produces Prader-Willi whilst a maternal deletion generates Angelman. Thus, the task for researchers now is to identify other imprinted genes, understand their phenotypic effects and roles during development, as well as the molecular mechanisms behind the epigenetic phenomenon that is a genomic imprinting.